If you've never heard of this game, I do have a small amount of behind-the-scenes story. I've actually played quite a bit of this game with my niece because it has co-op. So there's some pluses to gameplay pretty much right out the gate. But if you've never played this game before, well, there's this other game you may or may not have heard of called Crypt of the Necrodancer. Uh, Crypt of the Necrodancer was a rhythm rogue light, I think. God, I can never remember which is which. Uh, dungeon crawler style game, which was designed to be cool and fun and awesome and basically predicated upon the music and the visuals and the style of it. Fun game, rather brutal. Uh, most people I know have never even actually beaten it on any format, never mind some of the hard stuff that speedrunners tend to do. So, that was cool. Then they were like, you know what, we want to do a DLC. I forget the name of the company, but they wanted to do a DLC. They wanted to sit down and they wanted to make like a Zelda-themed DLC for the game. Maybe like make Zelda a playable character or something like that. So they officially reached out to the core Nintendo team. Funny fact, several of the core Nintendo team, and when I say core Nintendo team, I mean the actual developers, uh, actually have... Look at this morning's look. Um actually have uh, a lot of fondness for Crypt of the Necrodancer, including one name you may or may not have heard of called Miyamoto. Now, if you've listened to anything I've said over the last week about the DMC series, you know that when a particular executive has a lot of political sway, they anything they tend to put weight into tends to get done. So Miyamoto said, we're doing this. And uh, that they so they decided to make a completely separate new game, which is called Cadence of Hyrule. The full name of this game is, it's its scrolling up there, it's some ludicrously long name, I don't even remember it all. Uh, Cadence, hang on, let's, let's, let's watch this very, very slowly here. Cadence of Hyrule, colon, Crypt of the Necrodancer, featuring the Legend of Zelda, and that's the full title. You'll never hear me say that again. I've already forgotten it. It's already gone. It's done. It's gone. So there's several modes, of course, including the daily challenge. This is a bit loud. It, it, it's a joke, Zach Tef, since Ben Falkenstein already said that. Anyways, we're going to go through story mode, obviously. Um, double time mode, permadeath mode, which is exactly what it sounds like. Mystery mode, which is exactly what it sounds like. Random seed, which is exactly what it sounds like. Like it or not, this is already a decent amount of options. It seems like it isn't, but what this is, is something that changes how you're going to play rather substantially. So we're going to jot this down for a couple things. Yes, I know it's a bit loud. I'm... I don't know if I can fix that. We'll figure something out. But yeah, mutators. Thank you. That's the word. I can think of the damn word. Every world has its evils. And when the balance of power is inevitably lost, it's up to the courageous and the wise. But not the powerful. To restore it. But sometimes... Sometimes, they need a little extra help. Hope you like some smashing beats, by the way, because that's kind of what this series is known for. Obviously, heavy emphasis on the beat because the rhythm is the whole point of the game. attack the cuckoo. You know what's going to happen if you attack the cuckoo.
See what I mean by the music? How many of you noticed the clouds before I pointed them out? So let's look at the map for a second. Almost all of the green zones, the, the light green zones, are primarily overworld. Uh, all of them have the same general enemy types and tiering. Uh, this game is heavily tier-based. Um, to my knowledge, there are four tiers. We haven't even seen tier three or four yet. But almost all of this stuff is all tier one stuff with relatively low tier stuff, uh, low difficulty stuff, things that have at most four HP. Then you start to get a little bit closer to the actual dungeons, and you start to see a little bit of the Tier 2-ing. But even then, we've only poked at those, and we've only seen a couple of those. Tier 3 is in the dungeons themselves. I just find it interesting that, because of the pseudo-randomly generated thing, the overworld can be all over the place, as you're literally seeing here. In fact, if you're paying attention, we had to go through this whole rigmarole just to even reach the western part of the map and get to the rest of the overworld. I suppose that's the nature of the RNG built therein, but whatever. So, uh, you're supposed to suck early on and you're supposed to die a bunch. I say supposed to. You're designed to die a bunch, but there's supposed to be a point which you start making critical mass, where you start to get enough upgrades to hang for a bit, and the moment you can hang for a bit, you start to get more upgrades, and it starts to snowball very, very quickly, at least in a well-designed roguelite. Uh, again, I suck at this game, as I've said many times, but you can tell already I'm starting to make substantially more progress and staying alive for much longer because we've started to hit that point. I'll wait until we get a dungeon. Okay. Let's start over here. Oh, that timing. Ah. Sing! Please? Oh, 
There you go. Nothing. Oh my god. Oh my god, look at that nonsense. I, uh... I regret everything. holder of the Triforce. My name is Octavo, and Hyrule belongs to me, at least for now. If you don't like it, we'll see if you can stop me. I'll be waiting at the top of Hyrule Castle. You'll need to find all four of my magic instruments to reach me there. Now, let me introduce the first of my champions. Power of Lightning. Electrify my Glockenspiel's keys. Of course. Gleok and Spiel. Spiel? I don't know. Alright, so, funny little story. I mentioned boosting my niece's confidence. She beat that boss by herself. No help from me. Like, she freaked out at first. Like, oh god, I got it. I'm like, no, no, it's okay, it's okay. Just just relax. Think about it. You got this. And she's like, no, I don't. I'm like, no, no, it's okay. And she did get it. Because, of course, she did. Boss time. Looks like you got lucky last time. I'm gonna make the same mistake again. Here's my second champion. Power of the Earth, fill my maracas with shaking soil. Go maracas! Get it?
So I've never seen this boss, so this will be completely new to me. Perhaps you're stronger than you look. Now that it matters. You'll never be able to be Ganon. But are you strong enough to defeat my third champion? Power of water. Flow through my oboe with an icy cold. Oh my god, is this going to be a whiz robo? Yep! most amusing about rhythm games is they appeal to something extremely basic if you think about it. I mean, all you have to do is think about any time you've ever bopped your foot or your knee or your head or whatever in time to a song and you now understand the basic premise of a rhythm game. The whole point is to try and take that and turn it into an actual mechanic. So I know skulls don't respawn, so we've definitely swept a whole lot of skulls out. Don't take that out of context. I think the problem, Yura, is that the game is effectively always in combat, you know what I mean? So the mentality behind the music that's playing right now is very much that of a combat song. So it maintains the same level of intensity and vibe and tone and tempo and all those other fun things. Nintendo Power was uh, often wrong with the guides and passwords and, guide and information it would give. Like, surprisingly often. Nintendo Power was awesome. I still have my, uh, my Nintendo Power game uh, collection to this very day. But it was pretty normal for them to get stuff wrong. And cause frustration to many players who just thought maybe they just weren't doing it right. Not that I was totally one of those people. Ahem. So, any guesses on what the boss will be? It's a guitar. You again? Still haven't given up? I'm doing this for your own good, you know. We'll need an army to when the time comes to face Ganon. My fourth champion will beat some sense into you. Power of fire. Set my guitar strings ablaze. Um. Bass guitar most. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh.
feels like that should have been the first boss, but that happens in uh, the original game, too. Some of the bosses are just much easier than the other ones. So you can get a hard boss as your first boss, and an easy boss as, like, your fifth. Let's go and explain this briefly, because that's actually a, a whole topic. So, uh, the Force. Star Wars. If anybody can learn how to use the Force, then the entire setting needs to be rewritten to, to acknowledge that. Because when you have a massive setting with billions, trillions, quadrillions of people, all of whom can learn the Force, if they want to, even if you limit it within the range of the people who actually have the effort and the time, the resource and all that stuff, then what you have just done is created a situation where millions, if not possibly even billions of people, will be, cert will be, will be Force users. There'll be a whole gradient of how good, bad, and in between they are, but there will be a whole lot of Force users, right? Now that's fine, but if you do that, you then have to design the Force such that that doesn't completely break the setting in half, or you have to design the setting around the fact that everybody can be a mage, effectively. Does that make sense? This is why the overwhelming majority... Just hear me out, Spartan. This is why the overwhelming majority of settings will go out of their way to try and specifically make it so that you have to be born into magic, born into the Force, born into superpowers, whatever. Because it makes you, the writer, have total control over who has access to your supernatural abilities, and you don't have to consider the fact that X number of X percent of X people have access to this. It's much easier to design a setting like, say, Marvel, no offense to Marvel, which is, let's be honest with ourselves, based on real life, if you make it that only certain people can become superheroes. A ridiculous minority, if we're actually considering, like, if we got the full list of all the superheroes, that list is microscopic compared to the however many billions of people on just plain old Earth, right? Now, I know that's a planet, not a continent, but my point is, that is my answer to you. Do you want to design your setting around the idea that everyone can have the magic? Do you want to design your magic around the idea that everyone can have the magic? Or do you want to take the easy route out and make it so that only certain people can have the magic? Those are your options. And as I mentioned, the ridiculous majority of fiction goes with the you're born into it system because it's just so much easier to write. It takes much less effort and much less time. I was having a disturbing dream of Hyrule in Ruins, also known as a Tuesday. My daughter, Zelda, what happened while I slept? I prepared my champions to face Ganon, but things have taken an unexpected turn. I'll be taking my instruments back now. Perhaps I require a new champion. Let's find out if you are the champion of Hyrule. Prepare yourself! Okay.
Gollum, what have you done? You fools! Without my golden loot, how will we defeat Ganon? We have only one final hope. Hearts, potions, fairies, just just anything really. I'll take a loaf of bread. This must be the one Octavio feared. Please help me put a stop to this. <laughs> so kind of you to bring the remaining pieces of the Triforce to me. You may have defeated that weak thing Octavio's toy instruments, but now you witness the power that has brought Hyrule to its knees. It's not obvious, I'm controlling all three of them.
mean, why would there be a space cadet? Plus five to story, almost entirely based on the delightful visuals and audio, which is a story per hour density of 0.65 and a story ratio of 100%. Obviously, you don't care about that. That's that's whatever. What you're here for is the gameplay, which is plus 30 to gameplay, which is gigantic. <laughs> I stand by it, though. I've, I just finished the audit. That is four point, excuse me. 3.9 pluses per hour in terms of density, and an astonishing 91.67% gameplay ratio. All of those are very good numbers. Now, if I could get a drum roll while I say thank you to Nemesis. Thank you, Nemesis. I'll put that down for Jedi Fallen Order 2, Jedi Survivor, etc., etc. Drum roll, please! Ladies and gentlemen, the final golden number for Kings of Viral, this actually amuses me a little bit, is... Dramatic pause. 99.95. Just... Just... Reaching for that hundred mark and, and not quite making it. But I stand by it completely. Well, this game is absolutely not going to be for everyone, and there's a lot of... Uh, stressors, a lot of issues, uh, the early game hell is of course what it is, and that last dungeon kind of sucks. The fact of the matter is, this is legitimately a very well-designed game. Uh, they did a lot right, the rhythming is fun, the controls are great, the co-op is fantastic, the bosses are enjoyable, most of the levels are great. This is probably going to be a coffee game for a lot of people, but I do want to say very firmly and definitively this is still a good game. If you're at all interested, I do recommend you try it out. And if it doesn't, you know, if it looks like it's too stressful or whatever, no problems there, no judgment, because it's not. It's not for everybody. Yeah, also, uh, Yura's right. Do yourself a favor. Glance through the music first. Because, uh, and I mentioned this earlier, and I wasn't saying it as a dig at Yura or anybody. I was just saying it as a, like, a recommendation. If you're not into the music in a music game, you probably should stay away from it regardless of other factors. Because someone was commenting that I uh, was doing a little bit of the beat off. And that's because that little guider thing at the bottom, I wasn't even looking at that. All of my tempo was entirely based on actually listening to the song, right? That's how I do that. Shrug. And this was, this was absolutely a passion project, like I said at the beginning. The developers wanted to do a Zelda DLC. And Miyamoto wanted to make a Zelda version of, of Crypt of the Necrodancer. And here it is. 
you get some talented indie developers with some cordon to support, and this is what you get. So. Anyways, with all that, I am going to go ahead and chop off the highlight reel. <laughs>